After college, I put my science degrees to use, directing programs and gyms full of screaming kids and adults for years. Taught many clients, most who wanted me to teach them advanced acrobatic skills like a corkscrew or a back handspring as quick as humanly possible. In the beginning, it was so painful trying to stress, test, and try different neurobiology practices for how the brain learns on myself and a sea of hungry customers. Some who wanted that elusive backflip right now. I made mistakes, but the more students I had over the years, the more I narrowed down what actually increases someone's intelligence or how fast they can learn a new skill. So we're going to walk away knowing what specific behaviors can we do to increase our intelligence as fast as possible. By understanding how fast can the brain even increase its intelligence, what goes on inside of it to make this happen, so then we can understand what are the best behaviors that send some students skyrocketing towards their goals, while others I see move at a literal Snell's pace. The human brain can make new neural patterns, create new synapses to learn something new, and prune away useless connections at the rate of anywhere from maybe a couple hundred connections for slow learners to a million connections a day for high achievers. This is a very wide difference. What's really cool though is the more you work out your brain, the more it gets used to working and will naturally increase how plastic or open it is to learning anything new. From observing people, we know that your brain, depending on your behavior, can either become stiff and rigid in response to new information, or become incredibly responsive to stimuli. This is because your brain is something of an error correction machine, meaning that if you do something incorrectly and continue to adjust your behavior, making improvements, the brain will continue to adjust its own patterns on the fly. But word of warning, not all repetitions are created equal by a long shot. Maybe the most idiotic thing that I've heard many a teachers just say to students is just send it. Eat complete schnitzel at something, a front flip, acting, biology, and we'll see if that works. This is the opposite of what providing a stimulus that increases how smart you are looks like. Because this is violating the way the brain increases its ability to learn. Whether it's biology or a butterfly twist to impress your friends, the brain is constantly making predictions based on your past experience and current abilities. And with all of these just send it teachers, I always find the student is being pushed to a place that is way too far ahead of their current abilities. They are floating off into completely uncharted space with no tether to anything that's close to what they're trying to do. The brain is cognitively overloaded with all of the hundreds of thousands of tiny and big new things it needs to suddenly do. Not only here are you doomed to fail with some teachers yelling at you, but you can't possibly make any corrections to what you're doing. Literally all learning and by definition intelligence has come to a complete halt. This is like someone not being able to do a backwards roll on the ground, but somehow I or they expect themselves to get a backflip right away. I've seen this play out across many learning fields and it is insane. All repetitions have to be improving repetitions. Go too far and nothing good happens. So knowing a bit about how the brain learns, the speed at which the brain can learn, and increases the speed at which it will be able to learn in the future is staggering. A novel skill like, say, a cartwheel may require the brain to make something like a few hundred thousand changes to its connections. For learning a new language, however, the brain will instead need to make millions of changes. Most people I've met can learn a basic cartwheel in a day who have never done one in their life. It's not perfect, but to give you an example of how fast the brain can learn when it's fed the correct information, I've had young men like someone I'll call Tony, who was overweight, brand new to movement and athletics outside of gym class in high school, but Tony wanted to finally learn some of the moves he had seen superheroes and people do. It took a lot lot for Tony to walk through the door to the gym, and he was very apologetic, saying that he would walk out the moment I told him that this stuff wasn't for him. Tony did literally everything I said. After an hour of being brand new to movement, taking him through tons of steps, Tony could do what I call a sideways roll from a crouch back to a standing crouch, a very basic cartwheel, and the start of a jump kick he wanted being a pop 180 hook kick. Tony was thrilled, and his expectations were what he 
could do were shattered. However, I've also had students who had a background in martial arts or parkour walk into the gym, and in the same one hour private lesson, they picked up what Tony could do not in an hour, but sometimes in 45 or even 20 minutes, and they could cartwheel a bit better. How can this be? Perhaps the most mind-blowing fact about the brain I learned in my university is something called neural reuse. Neural reuse refers to the way the brain predominantly likes to learn new skills, that it refuses to make any brand new connections when it can simply make a new pattern among already existing connections. Surprisingly, most of the skills you can do, smells you recognize, is just the brain reusing large pieces of the same connections it uses to identify other smells or do other skills. I tell students that many of the connections they use to smell raspberries are the same exact ones they use to smell strawberries. So students who had done martial arts, even football before, could learn a cartwheel faster because their brain had already created some of the necessary connections it needed to do the cartwheel. So the big takeaway here is how fast your brain learns new skills depends largely on how many, even remotely similar connections it already has, no matter how novel that new skill may seem. We do not know the limits of how fast your brain can actually learn something new. Everyone can become a learning monster. The brain's speed at which it can encode something new into it can get faster and faster the more you push it, the more you treat it like a growing muscle. But unlike your bicep, the brain responds faster, bulks faster, increases its stamina, and its use of resources more. As my college professor said, muscles are dumb. The brain is quick to build itself. This means we shouldn't fret when what we're learning is completely foreign. You just have to get through the initial resource demanding stage when your brain makes brand new connections that you'll have forever. So what are the best behaviors that you can do to increase the speed at which you can learn, create connections, and then learn anything new faster? After stress testing many things on a lot of willing clients, there are two things that stood out. The first is a term you may know called first principles, being what are the core essentials, something like the three or so things that actually make the thing you're trying to do work. This is the difference between me telling a student like Tony about how rotation or applying a torque to your body works in order to get him to roll fast enough that he could get back to his feet versus me telling him to point his fingers or toes. For most tricks people wanted me to help them with, I was constantly on the lookout for their rotation rotation, balance, and height if they needed to jump. You have to know what is vital to making what you're trying to do work. And a way to see if something is vital is thinking, if I take it away, will the thing still happen? In which case, it doesn't matter nearly as much. However, I will confess that if you don't know what the essentials or first principles are, I've seen plenty of people still become pretty amazing at doing certain skills. Because your brain is always on the lookout for what to watch into itself and will take care of most things for you, if you get this next part correct. The second thing that is what the idiotic just send it and eat it coaches are failing at, and the biggest thing to learn from this video and apply to yourself, is the golden zone, or as I say, the Goldilocks zone, that works off of neural reuse. This is where you, or hopefully a decent teacher, can identify the zone where something is going to be novel for your brain, thus your brain will be stimulated, but not so overwhelming that you're overloaded and you do nothing but fail. We always want your brain to have some percentage of neural reuse to go off of. Say something in the order of 75%. Go too low in that percentage, or likewise too high in the step you're doing, and you will crash and be way too high up to even begin making corrections. An example is for Tony. Tony could walk, so the first step I gave him for his cartwheel was not putting both of his hands 
on the ground and trying to kick straight over into an epic handstand, but taking a step forward, placing his hands on the ground and lifting up a foot, then repeating that and doing the world's smallest hop, which for the first time placed all of his weight on both of his hands. Once Tony got good at small hops, he could either hop higher or keep it small and move his foot to the side, beginning a small turn. We continue this pattern until Tony could do a bigger hop, a small foot switch, and turn enough that he had a very basic cartwheel. The Goldilocks zone is the point of maximum stimulation for your brain, where it will be able to make all of the new patterns, identify all of the pathways to reuse, and new ones to build. And if you mess up, you are close enough to other patterns you have already made that one, you don't die, and two, you can actually correct what went wrong, even if you don't necessarily know the first principles of what you're doing. Don't bench press 400 pounds when your max is 250 or go so low that you're benching stuffed animals. So what's the twist to all of this? Well, the brain's capacity for neural reuse allows it to process new information quickly by leveraging existing pathways, too much overlap can happen, where the brain has trouble distinguishing between different skills you've learned and gets confused on what it should do, like learning a new language and suddenly becoming confused on how to say a word you already know, or you go to do a cartwheel and you get a weird hybrid between a cartwheel and a side roll you learned last week. The brain's tendency to generalize and overlap skills can suddenly activate pathways that are not part of the skill because they are so similar. The key to overcoming this neural overlap that I'll tell you is pretty strange to experience is one to simply, even if it's really short, repeat some of the lower steps for what you're trying to do. Give your brain a bit more data on what pathways it needs to activate for that skill, and many times your watches overlap go away. You're just playing on the upper end of the Goldilocks zone and the brain needs a gentle reminder of what to do. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. When you first learn a new skill, the brain will create a wide net of pathways among as many existing connections as it can and make some new ones, but the more you revisit the steps for a skill, the more your brain will commit a sort of genocide. It will prune away as many of the pathways it initially made for that skill, reducing that overlap, and because there's less pathways, the brain will now be a lot faster at processing, or doing the skill and learning other skills like it in the future. With us going into the upper limits of how smart the human brain can get in these videos, I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next one.